Happy Thursday. How you doing? Hey, we're talking about the total money makeover. This is actually part four. Part four, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We want to make over your finances. The total makeover. And we're doing it spiritually. Everything starts in the spiritual realm. Say this with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart, and smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Great things are coming my way. Everything always works out for me. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Pastor Jim is the ultimate pastor because I get results. Speaking of results, I told you yesterday that we have millionaire number five. Actually, he's worth a lot more than that. He just told me. I knew he was, but I wasn't counting him as one of the five because he hadn't said anything. But he told me that yesterday. The other day, he told me that. He says, I'm worth way over a million dollars. And he says, it's happened in the last four years since I've been blessing him. Oh, my goodness. It just, and he said, in his business, he doesn't solicit business anymore. It just comes to him. He's just sitting there and the phone just keeps ringing. Glory. Now, that's the way the blessing works. I told him, I said, you're the blessed man. You're the blessed man. Glory to God. Huh? That's the way it's supposed to work. Share this video with everybody you know. If you need your prayers answered today, call me, please. I'm always here for our prayer partners. Hey, Rada, a, a deal, I got praise report for you. Another praise report is a lady at work, somebody in our church, we love her very much, but she, where she worked, she lost some things, a couple items. I can't tell you what they were because it's, it's, she's in a classified job, but she lost a couple items worth a lot of money. Couldn't find them. At her work station at her area, could not find them. I should call Pastor Tim, Pastor Tim. She called me. Now that's, that woman has wisdom. She has wisdom because she called me and I declared she would have them. That was the day before yesterday. Yesterday evening, she calls. She says, Pastor Jim, I got him. I found him. I said, praise God. Praise God. We have an incredible record of getting people to find things. I mean to tell you. I, and I do this all. Pastor Jim, I lost my keys. I lost my purse. I lost my wallet. Lost this, lost that. Can't find my car. Can't find my dog. Whatever. People call, people call me, they lost their dog. They get it back. Every time. Glory to God. Huh? We have great record in court cases, too. Pastor Jim, I gotta go to court. I say, you have favor. In Jesus' name, you will win that case. And they do. They do. I mean, some people, we have had people get off on incredible cases where, where they thought they were going to jail. And they got off. Lady called me and said her son was accused of something very, very bad. He got off. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody else. Huge case. Lit up her whole town. Everything worked out. I just praise God for that, huh? Somebody, DUI. Number two, DUI. Dead to rights was going to lose her driver's license, was not going to be able to work because she had to use her car. The DA dropped the charges. That was up. That was not in Florida. It was up north. DA dropped the charges and told her lawyer, I don't even know why I did that. We know. We know because I said so. I said it would work out for her. I declared it. Bible tells us in, in uh, Job, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established. 
Mm. That was, well, now some of those are miracles. That was a miracle. We're going to talk about some of these miracles next week. Next week is Miracle Week, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you today about three things you should not do with money. Three things that God does not want you to do with money. Number one, love it. Do not love money. The love of money is the root of all evil. I'll tell you what, we have got some evil going on in this country, folks. And you can trace it all back to money. You can trace it all back to money. Now, there's a lot of wealthy people who do not love money. I can tell by the way Elon Musk talks. He does not love money. <clears throat> I can tell by the way he does things. He doesn't love money. He doesn't care about money. Brother Hagen was worth a lot of money. He told us. He told us he was. But you know what? He could care less. The guy, the, the guy he just absolutely, it, it didn't matter to him. It didn't matter to him. Huh? It didn't matter to him. It, it, they had bills come up in at, at Rama one time at the at the Bible school and, and and the church there. Huge bills came in. And somebody said, Brother Hagan, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? He said, We're just gonna act like God's word works. He walked away. The bills all got paid. Huh? He's not concerned about money. He doesn't love money. Don't love the money. No. Love God. Love God. God wants you to love him. Number two, don't worship money. Don't worship things that money buys. We have a beautiful home, but we don't worship this home. We have an airplane. We love our airplane. We don't worship that airplane. That airplane is just a tool. It's just a tool. Money is just a tool. <clears throat> our house is just a tool. It's a ministry tool. It's our, it's our ministry headquarters. This is where our whole ministry runs out of this house. Glory to God. It's just a tool. Our church building. We have a wonderful, wonderful church. It's just a tool. That's all it is. It's something to be used. And money is something to be used. It's to be used for the good of people. It's not to be worshipped. We, Mary and I used to, uh, years ago, we had a cleaning business because we had to make enough money to live on and our ministry was just starting. And so we were cleaning houses, the two of us. And God has spoken to me and said, if you clean houses, I'll provide for you. Well, we were cleaning houses while our ministry was getting off the ground. And so we did that for several years. Probably three or maybe three years. I don't remember exactly how long it was. But these people that way down the beach, if you go down the A1A, the, the road that runs right along the ocean out here on the beach, we live right out here. Uh, you go down past the, about 10 miles to the south of us, there's a blinking light. Well, down a little bit past there, there was some people off to the side, right on the ocean, had this beautiful round home. It was a beautiful round home. And they worshipped that home. All they talked about was how wonderful their house was. And Mary and I said, I mean, the first time we were there, we left there. We said, I said to Mary, I said, these people worship their house. And she said, yes, they do. They do. And I mean... It was just, and they were nice people and everything, very nice people, but they worshiped that home. They told us how that home, the reason it was round is because you could build a round home out right out on close to the ocean. And if there's a hurricane, the, the house won't blow down because if the house is round, the wind will hit the house and go around it instead of pushing against it. They explained all that to us. And they just 
worshipped it. And all oh, the windows had to be just so. And, and oh my goodness, and she was always polishing on the house. And they'd always standing outside looking at the house. And <clears throat> so we had some hurricanes. We had two hurricanes back to back. So after the hurricanes were all done and everything was, the roads were cleaned up enough, Mary says, I wonder how their house did. I said, let's go find out. So we took a ride down the beach to where their house was. It was a pile of rubble. Huh? The house wasn't so hurricane proof as they thought. Huh? They worshiped at home and God did not protect it. Our home did not lose a shingle. We just pleaded the blood of Jesus over it and God's protection over it. And we had a wonderful home at the time. We had built a new house, but we didn't worship it. We had a full of people that were in there for protection, but we did not worship that house. Another thing God does not want you to do with money, he doesn't want you to covet it. Don't covet somebody else's money or somebody else's stuff. Now, it's okay to want something like that. A little bit of envy doesn't hurt anything. Envy their stuff. So somebody got a nice truck. You say, oh, that's a nice truck. That's a nice truck. But don't covet their truck. Don't covet their stuff. Don't covet their husband or their wife. Don't covet their dog. But it's okay to want something like they have. It's when, it's when you want God to bless you the way they've been blessed. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. But don't covet their stuff. Don't plot and scheme to get their stuff away from them. That's evil. Amen? Always rejoice. There's people in our church who are more blessed financially than we are. And you know what? I praise God for those people. I praise God for those people. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. I rejoice every time they stand up and give a praise report. I rejoice for them. I go, oh, I hope that happens to me. That's why we do praise reports, to increase our faith. Amen? And I say, wow, I, I, I'm going to believe for that too. You know, if that can, I always say, if that can happen to them, it can happen to me. I don't want their stuff. I don't want their money, but I want to be blessed too. Huh? That's how you, that's how you do that. That's how you do that. You want to be blessed too. God, believe me, God can bless everybody at the same time. He doesn't have to take their stuff and give it to you. But the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. One of these days, one of these days, the righteous people will have the wealth. All of it. Don't make no, that's what the Bible says. That's what I believe. There's a lot of money going on in this country. And there's a lot of evil being done to get it. They're getting it from terrible, terrible sources. Terrible sources. And believe me, they will perish with their money. Their money is going to be laid up for us. Glory to God. Just bide your time. Just bide your time. Just go about your business. Once that blessing is spoken over you, then, you know, we talked about that important verse, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. It will take care of everything you need. It'll take care of it for you. Glory to God, huh? Is that good? Is that good stuff? You call me today if you need prayers answered. Call me today. I want to encourage you that God is going to move you into abundance if you're not already there. Now, a lot of you who watch these videos are already there, but the rest of you, I'm going to make sure that every one of you breaks through and I'm going to stay with you until you do. And then I'll stay with you afterwards. I am determined. I am more determined than you are that you're going to be blessed. If you can imagine that, because God's heart is with you. He wants you to be blessed. And I'm going to make sure it happens.